Hello, everybody. This is the Eiffel Tower Podcast. My name is Oliver G. This is a show about Paris. I interview the people who make the city of light shine. And sometimes that shine doesn't come from above ground. It doesn't come from the light at the top of the Eiffel Tower. No, not even the glittery lights on the hour every hour in the evenings. Sometimes the light is shone upon interesting things. And someone who does that is Morgan Wallace, who runs the Paris History of Our Streets account, We're going to talk about the underbelly of Paris. She likes the unusual things here. She likes going in the catacombs. She likes digging up interesting stories from the past. She even talks about how she got into trouble trying to make her way into a time capsule apartment of Pigalle. So this is a bit of a different episode, and I enjoyed nerding out on the underside of Paris. Uh... I want to say a big thank you to all the Patreon supporters of this show who make it possible. Patreon, Patreon, whatever you want to call it, doesn't bother me. Patreon.com slash The Earful Tower, where you sign up for a monthly or an annual subscription. Not only do you get all these extra bonuses, but you support your favorite podcast. Is it your favorite podcast? Maybe it is. If it is, hope to see you on Patreon soon. And to all the current members, merci beaucoup. I think it's time we get into it. Paris, history of our streets with Morgan. I'll be back at the end for a few more words. Let's get into it. Morgan Wallace, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. We've had a nice little uh, sort of catch up on our... Ten years of missing each other, mm-hmm. meeting each other. Indeed. Never sitting down in the studio yeah, together. And yeah. I'm glad that we are sitting down. And you know, it took a while, but um, I'm here and the patience has paid off. Well, there you go. You're yeah. um, you're a Paris lover, much as I am. I mm-hmm. think we've got a lot in common, actually. Uh, we both seem to have an affinity for the underbelly yes. of the city. Yes. And I, I respect people that enjoy the... You know, the finer things in Paris, because there's plenty of that. But I really like the rustic things. Mm. I I like the things that are, in, in French, they say crad, mm. you know, like a little um, dirty. Uh, crad. I don't crad. know this one. C-R-A-D? Yeah. Crad. C-R-A-D-E. C-R-A-D-E. Ah, crad. crad. With an yeah. end. Okay. Yeah. So you like the, the, like, the crud almost. I like the Paris from the people's perspective, yeah. like the, you know, middle class, which is dying out, as we all know. Because mm. um, that's me. I, I'm very middle class. I'm a single mom. Uh, I've been here 10 years, came as a student, you know, worked my way up. Uh, I just applied for my nationality last night, too, uh-huh. by the way. Oh, last night. Congrats. Yeah. Well, congrats if it works. Yeah, I, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I've worked my way up and I did it all by myself and I'm very proud of myself. Um, but yeah, I'll never step into Les Dumego or the places You'll like that. you never step into it? Never. And I worked right next to it. I just can't justify a six euro espresso. Interesting. Well, what are you, it. not even for um, like the feeling of, you know, like, because the six euro, the espresso is not worth six euros. That's a hundred percent. But but the one could argue that the feeling of sitting in the historical, you know. Oh, I prefer to be outside of it, giving it the middle finger. Or like really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I think this could be fun. I think we're we're going to talk about the underbelly of Paris, literally catacombs, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but also things that aren't the Dumego. So people listening, I think it's funny. I think there'll be people listening who love picture perfect Paris that the influencers share. Mm-hmm. And they'll be maybe feeling queasy, but interested yeah. in hearing what you got to say. Yeah, you know, I think there's always two types of people. There are the people that enjoy the cafes with the plastic flowers, mm. and then there are the people that enjoy the cafes that have wine glasses that are spotty, and the server is an asshole. And but it's authentic. Yeah, it's yeah. authentic Paris. It's authentic underbelly of yeah. Paris. I also think the other type of people that are listening, because a lot of the people who who listen to the Eiffel Tower are like kind of Paris experts. They've been here a bunch. They want to hear some truths being mm-hmm. told. And um, I'm excited to hear what truths you'll spit. Oh, I'll bring them out. Okay. It might be controversial. Well, I think we can uh, nerd out a little bit. On yeah, that, uh, yeah, okay. let's go for it. But also, I think it's it's important that we um, talk about your accent for a second. Oh, God. Where are you from? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, but like redneck, backwards. What does that mean, Wisconsin. redneck, backwards? What, what is that? Uh, you know, like when I go home, people say things like, and so I says... 
And so, and so I says, says, and I'm just like, now when I go home and I hear that, I'm like, we don't. So Wisconsin, Ugh. if the states, are, I'm holding up my hands. Yeah. The states are like a big, let's say, rectangle. It's yeah. like a sort of top It's left, in the right? middle. It's right next Mid- to the Great like, Lakes. Like, okay, okay. Um, so it's like Sw- the Swedes went out that way. Is that? It, no, mostly uh, like Czech Republic, ah. uh, Bohemia. Uh-huh. Uh, that's where all my ancestors okay, come can from. You, and can you do it? Can you exaggerate your accent so I can imagine what these are? Oh, don't names? you know? Did you eat? Uh, did you eat? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you like? Okay. You know, we combine things. Oh, don't you know? It sounds yeah, Irish or something. You know, it's it's strange, and I think a lot about it. Um, but yeah, so I'm from small town Wisconsin, two rivers, which we say trivers, um, right on Lake Michigan. Mm. Um, and it, Wisconsin is known for having cannibal killers. We got Jeez. Ed Gein, wow. Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Um, right where I grew up was where... Um, Making of a murderer. Okay. If you've seen that on I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Okay. Two miles from my house. Well, maybe some listeners are out yeah. there too, but that's very different from Paris by the sounds of it. Like. It, it. It definitely is. You know, and it's funny because I meet other people from Wisconsin here sometimes and yeah. they're like, where are you from? Yeah. Like, are you Canadian? Yeah. Your accent's really strange. I'm okay. like, no, it's small town Wisconsin. Okay. Well, I guess we've cleared that up. Now we're, yeah. uh, so we got a Wisconsinite. Is that what we Wisconsinite, in, yeah. Uh, in Paris. And we're about to go into the underbelly. I think it's uh, fun to start with the catacombs. Mm-hmm. You go down there an awful lot. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I consider myself a catafil yet. I mean, that's someone who really knows their way down there. Um, but again, like, I love talking about it, but I'm very careful to respect it because I don't want it to become like a tourist site. Mm. Um, the people that go down there are very passionate about it. And there's a whole nother world. How did you fall into this world? A uh, friend of a friend. Friend of a friend. Yeah. And I actually got with the guy who I consider to be like the godfather of the right. catacombs. Yeah. He knows everything. He knows anyone he meets down there. Very knowledgeable. Um, you know, there's rules yeah. when you go down there. If you go with a good group that's respecting the place and the history, you know, you can't bring glass down there. Anything you bring down, you pick up yeah, and you sure. bring out. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I just wanted to go one time to say I did it. Yeah. Never thought I'd love it as much well, as I do. What is it that kept you? Cause I've been on that once, you mm-hmm. know, we, we mm-hmm. haven't compared notes yet, but I went down there for, for the show for maybe I was mm-hmm. down there four or five hours or something. Quite satisfied with it. Don't know that I'd go down again. What is it for you that made you go, oh, i got to get back down here again? Uh, maybe, okay, the history is part of it. How many times have you been down there? Oh, I, I don't even know. More than 100? No, not more than 100. Okay. Maybe like 25. Okay. Um, so the history is great, um, but I also love that it's constantly changing. And there's like lots of, uh, like there's a map, obviously, which the map, like the authentic map, you have to earn it. Yeah. I like you can't this, just yeah. find it online. Yeah. Um, but there's secrets that aren't on the map. Yeah. And maybe you'll learn those secrets, like secret locations, other places from other cataphils that you meet. Yeah. Because it's a party down there. It really, especially if you go on the weekend, you it always seems like some of the pictures someone. that you share. I think I should just uh, pause to say that we're talking about the illegal part of the catacombs. Yeah, we're def- not talking yeah, about that's the true. Yeah. This is where you climb through a manhole cover or something. It's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many entrances are there? Uh, I mean, who knows? Yeah. How many different ones have you been? To? They uh, constant. It's a cat and mouse game. Yeah, yeah. The authorities close them up. It's a f- the fascinating underside that people don't realize. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I, a guy I used to play basketball with would tell me stories of when he was in high school and they'd pop out. He told me a story of once him and his mates popped out in a in the chemistry lab of a – do you know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. exactly? No, I don't. But I've heard like you can go into yeah. – there's They just go into buildings. a university mm-hmm. and hang around or, or, mm-hmm. or climb up a clock tower or something. Yeah. There's so much. And, and because everyone's so private about it and mm-hmm. respectful of the rules, the stories don't come out. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. yeah. Even when you share stories on social media, you hide them. I don't know how I how, do I see it because we're friends on social media or what? I mean, some stuff I just don't want to blast out there for yeah. everyone, especially with the catacombs. Yeah. Um and obviously there's human remains down there. E, of course, yeah. So yeah. I there's this thing called the le trône des os. Yes. Uh, in English. Uh, the throne of bones, mm-hmm. the bone throne. Uh, which is a throne, a chair made out of human bones. And it's kind of a, a rite of passage if you can find it and sit in it. Yeah. And I did that, got a picture, but I'm not comfortable sharing that. Yeah. And so I want to, don't get me wrong. I think, like, I don't know if I've seen this picture of you. Maybe I put it in my private yeah, yeah, stories. I've, I've seen someone sitting on it. Yeah. I don't know if it was you, but but it's um it's kind of frightening. 
It is. Yeah. But you know, when I was down there and I saw the human re- remains, because they're not everywhere, people tend to think that there's like bones just lying around. Mm. There's very few places. Um, and there's one secret room that not even a lot of cataphils know about. Um, the passage is, is blocked off and hidden. Um, but when you go down there, there it used to be like um, a well, a puy. Mm. And they would, during the, you know, just before the French Revolution, when they were emptying out the, the Cimetière des Onissons, mm. which was the cemetery by um, Châtelet that was just overfilling. Mm. And that's how the catacombs were kind of became an ossuary. Right. They brought bones there. Um, and yeah, they would throw the bones that weren't fit for the official catacombs that were maybe broken or whatever. They'd put them just down these the, yeah, these wow. wells. Okay, yeah. So in this room, you you go there and you literally have to walk over a floor of human remains. Wow. And you go there and it, there's skulls. and But the first time I went, we sat down and we played chess and we were drinking some beers and it was so social and calming and, and it was just the candles everywhere and I felt like it's weird to be calming surrounded it by skulls. It is. Skull. You would think it'd be terrifying. Yeah. I looked next to me and there was like a human tooth on the floor. Do you think people and, are listening to uh, us thinking that's disgusting? Yeah, probably. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Um, it makes me feel if those are my remains, I would be happy to know that there's people around them having a good time making memories. Yeah. You know, for me, that's, I, I don't want to be forgotten. And I think that's a, a good way to, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm respectful, you know, you have, and that's the most important thing. No one's like playing with remains or mocking no, them. No, no, or, no. You know? I, I sensed that when I went down there that there was an awful lot of uh, respect for not just the bones, mm-hmm. but everything. Everything, yeah. yeah. And so you've been, I want to put it in perspective, 25 times ish you've been yeah. down there. Are you seeing the same old bits all the time or is it just kind of like every time you're seeing new things? A lot of the passages you have to take. So I, I'm i predominantly in like the 5th, 13th, mm. sometimes the 14th. Um, like the Rue Saint-Jacques, which above ground is like a main, yep. a main way. Um, underground, there's a Rue Saint-Jacques and you can see it labeled because the catacombs are labeled like the streets above. Um, but you have to take the main roads, like you'd call them highways maybe. Mm, mm. Um, so yeah, you do go through the same places, right. but what did you think yeah. of, uh, have you seen the stuff that I did when I was down there? Did you watch the video? Listen to the episode? I don't think I saw all, all of it. I know I saw the pictures. Yeah. Did yeah. it seem like I got a pretty, yeah, definitely. That's a intro. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the throne of bones. Oh, you didn't. Oh. What about the raves down there? The parties? Um, <laughs> I went to one on Halloween and there were so many people, lasers, Everyone was dressed up. I was, I said immediately, I'm like, this isn't going to last. What do you mean? I said that the cops are going to come. Right, right. And they did. <laughs> the cat, cat, what do they call The cat police. Uh, yeah, cat flick. Cat yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then you just say, oh, I'm a, I'm an American, I'm from Wisconsin. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, and then yeah. what happens? Everyone else gets a fine mm-hmm. and a slap on the wrist and you're just like, I was I like, I just came here to see the Eiffel Tower and yeah, I wound I up felt, in the catacombs. Can you tell me about the entrances, not the addresses or anything? Mm-hmm. But is it like manhole covers? Is it holes in the wall? What's the general thing? Um, manhole covers uh, are the ones that I usually go down. There's a couple. So the famous one that everyone knows is on the Petite Centure in the 14th. Um, so I'm okay to talk about that entrance because anybody can go down there and use it. Right. Um, it's very well known. But that's also bad because then you risk getting caught. You risk running into some people that maybe... I've never ran into anyone that gave me a hard time. Everyone's always nice and, you know, friendly. Mm. Um, but I've heard stories, especially mm. with that entrance, you know, cause like teenagers will be down there like smoking pot and mm. so you never know what you'll run into. But yeah, the manhole covers are the ones I like. The problem is I can't lift them. Right. They what, are heavy. heavy. Interesting. Yeah. They're so heavy. Okay. I, 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 there's a risk that we just talk about catacombs. I want to come above ground mm-hmm. uh, for a while and talk about some of the underbelly above Paris. What I like about your content on Paris history of our streets is you uh, uncover things. You seem to have an eye for uh, the history of Paris that's in plain sight, but mm-hmm. that no one really, you know, like we, I think you and I, so for behind the scenes, uh, Morgan and I have back and forth about a bunch of things, everything from the Biev River, I think, to the Rue Mouffetard and stuff like that. 
Uh, we share an interest in that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But it seems to me you just get uh, sucked into like the shape of a rooftop or something. And, yeah, and absolutely. Then go yeah. How does that happen? What? How? Talk me through your process here. Um. So you know, it's just scroll. I like Reddit. Mm. Uh, scrolling through social media, I'll see things and. I'll be like, oh, that's interesting. Like just recently, someone sent me a video. There used to be like a Nazi torture chamber right by the Eiffel Tower, Mm. which I had never heard of, never seen. And there's a video like from the 40s from uh, um, like England talking about it and showing this torture chamber. Um, And I was like, wow, I've never heard of this. Yeah. Um, So right there, I'm like, that's interesting. There's not, you know, there's not many surprises I find any more things that surprise me. I've always heard, you know, little things and I'll be like, oh yeah, I know that story. Yeah. Um, I know there are plenty of things that I don't know yet. And that's what I love about Paris is I'll keep discovering new things, but yeah, I'll find these little stories that I'm like, I need to know more about that. Yeah. And it's maybe not something that's in a typical tour guide or hardly, y- you know, hardly. Like if you think of the BF river, I did quite a deep dive mm-hmm. into it. Literally I was walking in it outside of, of Paris. There's very little, especially in English, Mm-hmm. You can find about it, even on the signs around Paris. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not much going on. And that's a river that ran through Paris. It is, yeah. Um, and same with, like, some of the pictures I'm looking through your social media now. Um, like, it, it's, it strikes me that you just, uh, do you also just see it as you're walking along? Like, oh, look at this yeah. one with the, uh, these these roofs that are, I was reading this one, the architecture on Rue Galande. Oh, yeah. If you see a roof, it's called a... Uh, uh, pigeon uh, sur la rue or something like that. Right. If you see the tri, it's like maison a triangle a, shape. Maison à pignon. Ma- maison à pignon. Right. Um, yeah. So those are the really old houses that um, there's not many left in Paris. I want to say it, like most of them are in the fifth arrondissement. And there's like 20. Yeah. But if you see these houses, you know they were built before 1666. Yeah. Because in 1666, there was that massive fire in London. And houses that were built like this the fires could just jump from roof to roof, uh, you know, and just level entire neighborhood neighborhoods built, you know, these houses that were made of wood. Right. Um, so they said after that, uh, to prevent that from happening in Paris, uh, to turn it so you could have a fireproof wall. Yeah. So um, essentially the, the picture that I'm looking at now, which is an old, like a postcard picture from a hundred mm-hmm. years ago, this is, it looks like, this is a crude way to describe it, but imagine the McDonald's arches. Mm-hmm. It looks like, Triangle versions of that. So mm-hmm. presumably the fire comes up into that top floor and yeah. then shoots straight out. Like exactly. A it just to, across the road. It can just like jump. Yeah. But if you turn the roof, you can have a fireproof wall. Right, right, that, right. That's kind of what I've. Yeah, yeah. So block it out with the yeah. rooftops like mm-hmm. these house medium ones today that. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, yeah. So these things. So take pictures of them, go and find it in real life today. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like it's from. 1666 before those ones that are still mm-hmm. done by Shakespeare and company, mm-hmm. but they certainly do look old. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's been redone over the years and stuff. But it's- yeah, probably, you know, a lot of these old buildings, like it's hard to date them. Like mm. the foundations could date from a different time or, you know, the, the upper floors could have been added later on, but mm. you can usually identify those things. What's your favorite part of Paris to walk around for the unexpected oldie things? Ye oldie. <sighs> Definitely the, the fifth. Yeah. That's where I've always lived. Um, you, you know, know, the fifth has always been a bit of a mystery to me. I oh, feel really? like I know Paris really well. Mm-hmm. I never lived around there. Mm-hmm. And I don't, like, I wouldn't even know really where to start to go looking for this kind of stuff. I mean, by, like, uh, Shakespeare and Co., uh, if you wander those little streets there, um, there's a lot of old things. Um, and then further back in the fifth, too. Um, like up yeah. towards the Pantheon and the Silver. Yeah, Island. yeah, on the border of the 13th. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, Rue Mouffetard runs through there, and that's what I always recommend to people coming to Paris. Uh, it's just a beautiful market street, cobblestoned, where it's lined with all these old houses. Mm. Like, there's several that were that have the that roof. Um, you know, so that really brings you back in time, and, and that's something I appreciate. I love to, you know, see a really old picture mm. of Paris mm. um, and compare it to Paris today. Right. I'm passionate about that i've seen you do that a bunch of times where you put <clears throat> you put like a like a red arrow or something uh i'm looking at one now and then you track it back through history and tell the story of it why do you think this kind of content isn't going viral i mean because people aren't it's 
people aren't passionate about it and and that's fine like especially people tourists coming to paris for the first time or the second time they want to do the eiffel tower they want to do you know sacre coeur those kind of things which i understand um but i think once you've been here a while and you've done all that then you really start to see the things that you've missed mm. the history and yeah not everyone's interested in history not everyone had an obsession with little house on the prairie like i did mm. you know I, i love that history growing up in wisconsin you know and that's 19th century history for right, me right. that was right. ancient yeah. and paris like i mean the house i live in was built before uh, America became America, yeah, you yeah. know? I can relate to that. I can relate to that with my obsession with the Philippe uh, Auguste wall. Yeah. An 800-year-old wall given mm -hmm. from, you know, I've said before the oldest thing where I used to live in Australia was the lady next door. The lady next door. She was old. She was oh, ancient. yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> She was ancient. But, um, yeah, I can totally relate to it. And uh, I can see why it's fascinating. I think there are a lot of people I tell with this show – I say that I'm interested in, I think I want to talk to people on their second trip to Paris. Mm -hmm. I think first trip to Paris, yeah, go and do all that yeah. stuff. Do it. Like, I think mm -hmm. it's great. Um, and then second trip, come talk to me. That's where it really starts getting yeah. interesting. It feels yeah. like for you, maybe it's more like, come talk to me on your fifth trip. Or something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Or unless you're really, you know, into history and architecture. Uh, there's a, a guy, uh, Leonard Pitt, who uh, wrote this amazing book where he did kind of what I'm interested in. Maybe that's where I first started really being passionate about it. But he took these old pictures um, and compared them with the streets today. And right. he put boxes around things like to identify the markers that have, you know, still stayed. If it was one building or several buildings, um, just comparing it. And yeah, I saw he was on social media, sent him a message. He responded and You know, this was a couple of years ago. And I told him, I'm like, your book is my bathroom book. Always yeah. <laughs> keep it next to the toilet. Always there. It's that book I refer to all the time, yeah. you know. Uh, What did he say? He was, he was impressed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's an honor to have sure, someone that sure. just keeps coming back to yeah, your book. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, and yeah, he's coming to Paris next week and I'm going to meet up with him. I'm, I'm really excited. Awesome. I, he lived here like in the, the seventies and kind of like me, he, you know, he started, he was in the Chambre de Bonne, you know, it didn't, was living as that student life, which I think everyone, if you live in Paris, you got to live the student life. The best way to begin. You got to be broke for a little bit, you know, yep. eating baguette sandwiches and, uh, having those sh six floor walk up apartments, like. You know, I, I did that. That's I how think, I started too. Yeah, right? yeah. But what about this? You said that you mentioned to me you had something on this uh, untouched apartment in Paris. Yeah, so it pops up on social media every once in a while. Um, but in 2010, I want to say there was an apartment that was discovered um, in the Pigal. Uh, it's actually called the uh, Nouveau uh, Athens, sure, New, New uh, Athens neighborhood yep. in the Ninth, um, and it was a time capsule. Uh, they opened it up and discovered it hadn't been, uh, no one had been there since like uh, World War II. It just snuck, like no one was dead in there or anything. No. Um, so there was a book written about it, like the pictures, because there were pictures of this apartment. But the big thing was there was a, a painting, a Boldini painting, a beautiful, beautiful woman. And it sold like for uh, like two million or something like that. It wasn't even known, like they had to, To verify it was a lot of work, but yeah, this fascinating apartment. And then this story came out how the woman there like fled from the Nazis and went to the south of France and she never came back. She never she moved to the south of France during World War II and never uh, came back, but she still paid for it. Mm. And then she died. And the funny thing is she was kind of a, a recluse, like she was kind of a loner. Mm -hmm. And in her nursing home, apparently she had like a delivery guy or someone that kind of took care of her and she left him her apartment and he had no idea and this apartment is you know worth probably a lot of money so he had hired an appraiser to go and unlock it yeah and so when i first heard the story i was like that appraiser who is this guy right looked him up called him asked him to meet and sat down with him and he told me the story of how when he opened this apartment he was the first one to open it had no idea what to expect. And he was describing it to me and how everything was gray. 
just dust covered in yeah. a thick blanket of dust. And he picked up a, a coffee cup from the table and underneath it was this brilliant yellow. Wow. Because it had been, you know, covered for so many years. As in the table itself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a tablecloth. Um, so yeah, I, I had this great conversation with him, talked to him about that. Um, but then typical me, I want to go further. I want to see this apartment. Who's living there now? What does it look like now? Do they know what happened there? Mm. Um, so this is where I get a little obsessive about things. Right. And I did so much research. I knew the, the neighborhood of it, but I didn't know where it was. And I printed off articles, went around the neighborhood and just asked people mm. and ended up finding the address. Uh-huh. So that's great and all, but how do I get in? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you live in Paris, you can't just walk into buildings. There's codes and... Let alone an apartment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I waited outside until someone went in and I showed them the articles. I was like, yeah, you know, do you, have you heard about this story? Like there's an apartment here. I'd really like to talk to the owner. And I was so surprised by how many people had, had no idea. Um, but eventually it, it, everyone I met in that building, once they read it, they were like, oh, that's fascinating. You know, good for you. And everyone was encouraging me. And that kind of motivated me. And I spent so much time going there trying to get in, ended up getting in, knock on the door. Um, and this like teenage girl answers. I'm like, Oh, is your mom home? You know, I, I like to speak to her about the history of this apartment. And she's like, no, but I'll I'll let her know. Okay. So I wait like a week. No, nothing from her mom. Go back. (laughs) And again, this girl answers, her mom's not there. Like, Oh, can you know, please let her know. Like, I'd like to just talk with her. Um, she says, okay, takes my card again, nothing. I go back. <laughs> the, you can tell where this is going. Um, the girl answers again, and she's like, "No, my mom's still not here, but she's going to call you. She, you know, she's interested." And she's like, "Do you want to like just take a look at yeah. the apartment?" Yeah. I was like, "Absolutely." Yeah. So I go in, uh, take a couple pictures. I asked her, "I'm like, can I? Do you mind if I take a picture?" And she's like, "Yeah, go ahead." And I said, "I'll ask your mom." You know. Um, and I took these pictures, like comparing the apartment to the pictures that were on social media, you know, the really old ones to how it is now. And I left. I was so happy and, you know, waiting for the mom to call. Oh, she called. She was pissed. Really? <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm calling the police. You invaded my apartment. You invaded my privacy. Uh, and I did feel awful. I was like, oh, I could, if someone would have done that to my daughter, I probably would have been pissed too. Um So yeah, this was maybe like eight years ago and I've just had these pictures and this information. I've just been sitting on it, trying to decide if I, if I can share it or not. Um, but the thing is, so everyone says this apartment was, you know, a time capsule closed since the forties. Um, but that's not true. Uh, the lady who fled this apartment, she actually had a son who lived there like in the sixties. Uh, I don't think he lived there permanently, but they found like newspapers from the sixties and, um, so the whole time capsule story isn't, it's not as exciting really maybe as, uh, yeah. as, as we wish it was. Yeah. You know what? Like I get, I get the mom's perspective on that mm-hmm. story. But at the same time, like when you think about it, Paris is weird cause the apartments, you've got to get through all mm-hmm. the boundaries to get there. But if you think about houses, like in Wisconsin or mm-hmm. whatever, it's not that weird to knock on a door and ask if you can see something. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. you know, Parisians are a little more private. Uh, sure. It's amazing. Yeah. You have to show me those pictures. Oh, I will. Okay. I will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, time's running out. I want to know what what else are you excited about in Paris? Are there some mysteries that you haven't uh, oh dug into yet? Oh my gosh, there's so many things. I've uh, I you know I have a list going. Um, hmm. I'd like to uncover more in the architecture, like old architecture perspective. Um, there's a lot of buildings I have addresses for that I'm you know waiting. To the day to pass when mm. the door opens for me to get in. Um, you know, with those, your story about that uh, Pigalle place, I'm a bit like that with the Hector Guimard, um, our Nouveau buildings in the 16th. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm probably, uh, I've said this before, I think I'm on probably some watch lists yeah. from sneaking through gates. And, yeah. Uh, it's weird, but it's just like that draw, the fascination mm-hmm. of these kind mm-hmm. of things is, uh, is too strong. Yeah, it too is. Too strong. You know, and I am a big believer in the the um philosophy of and in, in France I believe this is huge you um I will always I, I per, prefer to uh 
what is it? Ask for ask for uh, permission, forgiveness, uh, forgiveness rather, rather than, than yeah. beg for permission. Yeah, That's yeah. my thing. Yeah. And I'll always try. I'll always try. And yeah. if someone, until someone tells me no, and then, you know, I'll try a little bit harder. I wonder if it's easier or harder being a woman in this than a man. Oh, definitely. Like I, I mean, I, I guess it depends on the situation with this whole apartment thing. I tried to be professional. I think I even said I was like a journalist. Yeah. Um, journalist can be a dirty word as well. It Some could be. Yeah. I, I, I said I was like a small time journal yeah. journalist from the, from Wisconsin. From Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe we should do uh, some live video one day. Cause I always need someone who's got the, who's got the, the guts to, to hold a door open and sneak through with yeah. me. Okay, well, with that in mind, uh, there's plenty of Paris to see. I think uh, if people want to dig into the underside, they should check out your social media pages. Facebook is your favorite one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Instagram likes to limit my words. And, yes, because you got a yeah. lot to say. Paris, yeah. history of our streets. Just type it straight into Facebook or Instagram. I'll link to it in the show notes below. But uh, follow along, say hello to Morgan and get uh, an idea of the underbelly of this fascinating uh, city. Morgan, thanks for coming to the studio. Yeah, thanks for having me. So once again, guys, show your collective uh, power as listeners. Go and follow Morgan, Paris History of Our Streets. If you do it on Facebook, just type it in. If you do it on Instagram, put a little dot between every words, parish.history.of. etc. I'll link to them in the show notes below. Another shout out to all the Patreon members. You guys are keeping this going. And uh, also, if you're thinking about doing a walking tour of Paris when you're in town, don't forget that we offer them the earfultower.com slash tours. Maybe, just maybe. I'll be leading the tour. I usually do one a week. Otherwise, we have a handful of exceptional guides. Let us show you Paris, theeiffeltower.com slash tours. That'll do for this week. I'll see you again next week. Merci beaucoup and au revoir.